The wait is finally over and I finally have my hands on the Game Station Pro. My arcade sent this to me. I am a huge Atari fan. I've covered lots of Atari products. I cover a lot of Atari in general on my channel and I was very interested in this when this got announced last January. And wow, I have a lot to say about this. I do look at this, I do an unboxing. This is a full review. I do add games to it. I'm gonna talk about that test some controllers, give you my thoughts, and sit back, relax. Here we go. Over the last 14 years, I covered lots of Atari products, flashbacks, and you know, there's been a lot of these types of things on the market. Is this any different? Uh, it says as 200 plus games. We're gonna check that out and see exactly what that looks like. Uh, the packaging is pretty nice, uh, multi-language, and it kind of talks about having some of the classics shows here. Hey, it's got these games, and you know what? There's a lot of people really anticipating this release as this might be uh, something many Atari fans look forward to. And it comes with uh, instruction manual as well as a certificate of authenticity. And uh, packaging is pretty nice though, overall. Uh, it kind of reminds me of kind of like a, like a deluxe flashback. Comes with a poster, uh, my arcade offers uh, a plethora of other kind of mini arcade units and you know they do some licensed deals with some other companies uh, Namco with for Pac-Man and they have many other products out there they even have a Atari 50th uh, little mini arcade that's out there and so yeah here's the certificate pretty nice so you know it, it, it doesn't feel cheap and so it's nice to see this packaging. I think that price point, uh, it's on sale at Costco for $80. So if you have that, if you're in the States or have a Costco near you, um, that's one option. And then on their website, you can pre-order it. My pre-order got canceled like many other people. And so, um, you know, you can go directly through their website. I don't know what that's about. They had a shipping issue. Here's the joystick and the joystick Feels pretty nice. I wonder if it has a weight in it. Um, it's got three main buttons with a paddle on the right hand side. Um, I'm gonna test this out and play a majority of the built-in games with this controller. It has a save button and you can turn it on and off with a switch. It takes four AA batteries. Not bad, lights up too when you power it up. I'm gonna show that. Comes with the HDMI cable as well as a power cable, no brick though. So that's the only thing it doesn't come with. The actual unit itself, has got a really nice weight to it. I do wonder if it has a weight inside. Micro SD card on the side, and it takes uh, it comes with HDMI cable as mentioned, and uh, there it is. Nice size too. It's got some grips on the bottom too, anti-slip. I love when companies do that. So it's got a really nice feel to it. And there's those uh, slip guards there. Oh, those are awesome. I love when uh, they have those. Anyways, looks nice. It looks kind of got, has that Atari theme to it. Has the, uh, you know, the Atari theme grill and, you know, the silver uh, looking plate on top. Here's uh, comparing it to a 2600 Junior and the Atari 50th uh, anniversary uh, flashback. And uh, it's super tiny. So yeah, so it's, it's kind of mid-sized. Um, great if you don't have a lot of space and you want to hook up an Atari console. This might be an alternative for people that want to, you know, get something to represent Atari. You know, it's officially licensed. Here's a joystick comparison to the original. You can't use the originals on this. It has uh, USB-C ports in the front. I'm going to show you how to get around that to hook up controllers later on in this video. So, uh, you know, so far it's got a home button on there and a power button right on the console. Here it is compared to the Switch. Uh, you know, it's close to the width of a Switch uh, and um, definitely shorter. And so it takes four AA batteries per controller. Both controllers are identical. I do like that. It comes with two controllers as, you know, if one breaks, at least you have another one. And so it's mostly four two-player games. Now there is some four-player games included here, so I don't know if you can hook up four controllers to this or if my arcade's gonna offer additional controllers for replacement. It would be nice if they did. Um, I could see people breaking these. Um, overall, the build quality looked pretty uh, pretty good though. 
the button on the controller is for save, uh, save states. You can switch it on and off. And then there's USB, USB C uh, input. And so there it is for power. Uh, there you go. There's it lighted up. Looks pretty nice. Um, overall, uh, with some buttons on it to select start and home. And so, uh, you know, here's here it is powering it up. And you have featured games, all the Atari games, the bonus games. You have 16 by, by 9, 4 3 aspect ratio. You can put um, a bezel art on it. You can only use that if you have 4 3 ratio. You can only do one type of scan line. Now, hopefully, with community builds, uh, that can change uh, as it typically does. And so, we're going to jump right in. Here's the featured games. Several Atari 2600 games, some homebrew and aftermarket games. I'm going to go through this quickly. As you can see here, uh, a little bit of a mix. Uh, if for people looking for Activision, no Activision games. And so that's a total bummer. Here's 5200 games, not too many 5200 games at all, as well as only, uh, you know, 10 or so uh, 7800 games. Lots of arcade games, a lot of old school stuff, everything, but it's got Tempest, Crystal Castles, um, a, a, a nice kind of old school classic mix, and not too many paddle games either, but it does have some. And so uh, uh, adding games, I do believe you can't use the paddle feature either. So it's the paddle is just a nice kind of novelty, and it works okay. I'm going to show that. Um, and just wanted to show. Now the bonus games, there's lots of bonus games. Lots of NES and Genesis, as well as some arcade games. Some arcade games I just covered on my Evercade video, Burglar X, so it has some Pico Interactive licensed games on here. So I thought that was pretty interesting. I'm going to show a couple of those games, as well as just a nice mix. Even uh, even the Immortals on here, which is pretty awesome. And so uh, Steel Force, which is actually a pretty decent uh, arcade game in World Rally. And uh, yeah, let's jump in. While the joysticks it comes included are functional and they work for the most part for Atari Classics, I found when you needed finesse, really accurate control games such as Gravatar, I kind of struggled. So I think overall the, the paddle feature on the joysticks works great. I actually had no problem playing Super Breakout here. I think fans will be pleased with that. Uh, Centipede, this is the Atari 5200 version of Centipede with the scan lines. It looks okay. Um, again, that joystick is kind of hit and miss. I don't think it's any fault of the joystick. I just, I don't know. I, For me, I, I'm used to playing with different controllers, so it took a little bit to get accustomed to. So here's Missile Command. Uh, unfortunately, no trackball to play with Centipede or Missile Command, so that's that's gonna be kind of a bummer for some people, as you know, for the 5200, that was a major advantage. Here's Food Fight, where the controller does really well, and I thought overall the games played fine. I was actually impressed with how the games played and look. I don't know if it's one-to-one -one accurate, but the games worked, I enjoyed playing them. I've played a lot of Food Fight and found this to be an enjoyable game to be included. Dark Chambers is on here, another Fantastic game for the Atari 7800 often overlooked library. And so, yeah, the games look great. Uh, 720p, by the way, for people that uh, want want to know uh, the resolution. And here's Warlords Arcade. It plays okay. The paddle was just okay with this. Um, I don't know. I, I, I wish there was a sensitivity adjustment for paddle. I don't know if there is. I, I couldn't find one on this. And here's Super Asteroids. Again, uh, this was a game that the joystick was just working okay for control. The, the, we can bypass the, the controller. So for people that are hung up about that, you can use a modern controller. I'm going to show that later. Uh, here's one of the bonus games, Eliminate, Eliminator Boat Duel. And this is where kind of the, the use of the joystick that comes with it it struggles you know this is a game that definitely needs an nes control pad uh here's thunderbolt 2 kind of a, a pico interactive game that i'm not too familiar with kind of a, a semi-generic shooter for the genesis i do believe uh, and and you know it's it's okay uh joystick a little bit better for that and then games like water margin which is a side-scrolling brawler that joystick just to me i just i i couldn't play with it i need a control pad I, I definitely could see people enjoying 
games such as this, which are a bonus to this, better. Now, let's add some games to this. Okay, with your micro SD card, make a folder and label it games, capital G, lowercase A-M-E-S. And thank you, third gen gamer on Atari age for helping me with this. And you should see this blue screen. Uh, I label my games accordingly. So it, it, it all is in one folder. You can't subcategorize. So you wanna make sure to organize it accordingly so you don't get uh, confused on what you're playing. Game Gear, no problem. It was pretty cool. Again, huge shout out to third gen gamer who was essentially telling on the forums that Game Gear does work. Awesome, this is uh, Shinobi 2, and you have Gauntlet 2 here on Game Boy, so Game Boy ROMs work, at least this one does. I was just testing as much as I could, as quick as I could, and just testing different platforms. Uh, you know, Rampage on Game Boy Advance, you know, the combo cart with Paperboy, uh, this ROM works great. And looks and plays great. You know, again, 720p um, fills the whole screen. Uh, there's no adjustments uh, natively. This is Ghouls and Ghosts, one of my favorite Sega Genesis games. Um, playing with that controller, that's where games such as this uh, I, I struggle with. You know, some people may prefer it, but um, I would definitely recommend playing with a modern controller. We're going to show you that a little bit later. My homebrew Catacombs of Chaos works, so homebrews do work on this depending on what game it is, and wanted to show that, uh, you know, homebrews as that's, this could be a viable option for people that want to check out homebrews. R-Type Deluxe, Game Boy Color game, fantastic port of this arcade classic, and wow, just, just an awesome game, and looks and plays great, and so it uh, plays okay with the controller again. Uh, Unowars, this is another homebrew from Pac-Man Plus, and this works on here. Uh, it was nice to see that. I was just trying to test a bunch of stuff. And next up, a Bentley Bear. Bentley Bear's Crystal Quest. Unfortunately, Pokey Sound doesn't work. There is, I do believe, a Tia Sound option for this ROM. Uh, this is the, with the Pokey Sound, and so that's why you're not hearing, hearing any sound, okay? Star Path Supercharger Games, the official Frogger. Wanted to show that it looks to be playing great and nice to see this. If you haven't played this, this is the definitive version of Frogger for the Atari 2600. Uh, this is Pac-Man Championship Edition for the NES. And that's right. And it plays awesome. And so this is a good example of a game that works great with the joystick. And so I found myself wanting to play this uh, and, and, and not continue the review and just play some games. Here is the Atari 5200 version of Space Invaders, and um, looks great. And you know, uh, I, I know that some people are gonna prefer to play that on the Atari 5200. I do believe you can even play this with a trackball. So as of this post, you can add 26, 52, 78, NES, Genesis, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy, Game Boy Color uh, ROMs to this and play them. Hopefully with community builds, more different platforms can be added. Forgot to mention ROMs such as the Atari 2600 have to have the A26 uh, file type. And so uh, A78 for 7800 and A52, that is the file type needed to make them work properly. Let's test some controllers. Getting a USB-C male to USB-A female adapter and a package off of Amazon, the link below. And you can use an Xbox One controller wired up, no problem. And honestly, I think it makes a huge difference. You can use both the control pad and the analog stick. And yes, I really think this makes a difference uh, for people maybe used to modern controllers. Also tested it with a PlayStation 4 controller, worked awesome. Those are the two best that I used. Uh, I tried the Atari VCS modern controller, did not work, wah, wah, and I uh, tried to switch as well. So really the Xbox One as well as the PS4 controller were the best. Overall, what do I think? Not bad. Better than I thought. Originally when they announced this, they didn't have the paddles as well as a micro SD card slot. I know that that was added afterwards, and I think... 
Um, overall, I think it's not bad for that discounted price. If you can get it at Costco, I think it's like $79.99. On their website, it is $100. $100, you know, on the fence maybe. I think $80, this is a solid Christmas buy for that person that doesn't collect anymore, just wants to play, go back to yesteryear and play a bunch of Atari games. And people, if they want to add games, you can add all sorts of Atari, Sega, Nintendo, and more. This is before the community builds too. I know that community builds are probably gonna make this even better. Uh, the firmware on this was 1.2, so I know that's just gonna get better, and I look forward to seeing what people come up with, as well as enhancing this device. Overall, solid. Joysticks are my favorite, better than I thought. I would use a, mo a wired modern controller and call good, played much better that way, less lag. Anyways, that's it. What did you think? In the comments below, let me know. And thank you for coming to this. I think for people that are considering a, an Atari 2600 Plus alternative, something very different, this might be the way to go. I look forward and I will be getting the Atari 2600 Plus for review very soon. And so I'm going to be looking at that and comparing it to this. And as always, if you're new to my channel and you like what you see, Consider hitting that like and subscribe button and clicking the bell as I'm uploading videos every week. You folks are wonderful and beautiful. Let's keep it positive. This is Immortal John Hancock, and you take care.